Hey, what's up, guys? What's up? What's up, uh, Facebook Nation? What's up, BTY Nation? What's up, UMC Nation? Coach Bobby here, your friend, your your trainer, your coach, uh, your guiding partner, or whatever. So today, guys, I came to the office to my gym uh, a little bit early. Where I came here on my off day to speak to you guys about something that came to me again in the shower. Right, a new idea, a new anecdote, a new lesson, a new story. So. Um, Today, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about challenge, right? About fighting through barriers, right? One of the mis, the most misunderstood things. What's up, Gavin? One of the most misunderstood, what's up, Tony? One of the most misunderstood and unappreciate, unappreciated parts of working out, of training, is the mere fact that you don't get better unless you hurt, right? That sounds simplistic, Right, it sounds simple, and we think we all understand and know that, right? But one of my mantras in my classes, one of the things I say quite often is that the workout don't start until you wanna stop, right? The workout does not start until the moment you wanna stop. And so to rephrase that, right, only the reps, right, only the reps after you're in pain, after you wanna stop, only those reps count right because until then your body's used to what you're giving it right the stimulus you give your body to until that point is new right so if i can do 30 push-ups one through 29 don't even count right if i can do 15 reps of curls with 30 pounds the first 14 don't count right so so the beauty of what i do is i'm able to come into my laboratory i call it every day and I can work on principles and laws that govern the universe, that govern growth, that govern the human spirit, right? In a controlled environment, right? But what, what's beautiful about what I do and why I love what I do so much is that I'm able to see, right? The correlation between what we do in here, right? In my gym with the big old weights and what life throws at us, right? I'm able to translate metaphorical weight to real life weight. And so what I'm talking about today, yes, it's about training. It's about building muscle, right? Your body is a computer and you have to train it and program it to build muscle, right? You have to, you have to purposely put your body under tension, under pressure, under stress, under pain, under pain to make it change. Right, you have to give your body a reason to grow muscle. Right, the breaking down of the muscle tissue is a message to your body that I need to get bigger, stronger muscle tissue. But not until you break it down can that be done. You have to tear down the muscle tissue so your body can rebuild new, stronger, better muscle tissue. Well, guess what guys, your life is the same exact way. Same exact way. You don't get better until you pass through the point of comfort. Right, so, so if I can speak comfortably to my children or to a friend, I'm not growing, right? Driving up to, to my gym and getting ready to do a Facebook Live to you guys is stressful. That's what I need to do, right? Because not until then am I growing, right? If you're going through counseling, right? The first through few sessions where you're kind of going through the, the uh, pleasantries, how you doing, what, you know, how, you know, how'd you grow up? All the, all the sessions that are comfortable are the build up to the ones that really count. Not until they become uncomfortable are you growing, right? So whatever you're doing in your life, right? If you are comfortable and not challenged and not stressed, you're not growing. And, and like you guys, I push back against it. Right, I, you know, I was fearful of, of, of trying new things. I'm still fearful of trying new things. We all are, right? But part of, part of why I've been successful in my life in certain areas, right? In fitness, in football, right? In finance, right? And now trying to build, not trying to, building uh, this new business, this new fitness brand, right? Is because I embrace pain. Right, Jeremy? I embrace stress. I embrace improvement. In fact, I, I say I have an addiction to improvement. 
right? I don't run from it. Does it hurt? Yes. In fact, this, you know, these five years of, of trying to grow this business have been extremely stressful for me, extremely painful for me, right? But once I realize, and I'm still realizing that all of that is necessary, it makes it almost enjoyable, right? Almost enjoyable to know that, that I got to get to this point where it hurts. I got to get to this point where it's painful. I got to get to this point where my doubt is at its all-time high. I got to get to this, this point where it's stressful, right? Because if I don't, I can't move past it. I can't be a great speaker. I can't speak to thousands of people if I can't speak to five. If five makes me nervous, I can't, I can't grow my fitness brand and be vulnerable to millions if I can't take scrutiny from some football parents, Right, so, so when you're in the moment, not just in fitness, when you're in the moment of, of going through that last rep, right, and, and you want to quit, tell yourself, this is the rep that counts. It sounds corny, right, but until you get to that point, none of that shit counts. Right, it don't count until it hurts. You don't get better until it hurts. You don't grow until it hurts. Right, so if you're going through life right now and you're comfortable, right, setting your alarm for 6 a.m., getting up, going to the job, getting to the job, putting your coffee cup down, going to the snack room, getting your little breakfast, coming back, you know, checking your email, going to lunch, coming back, checking your email, doing a few, a, a few voicemails, calling people back, doing a little work on the computer, doing a little report, whatever it is, and then going home, sitting on the couch, doing the same thing day after day after day, you ain't getting better. And there's more in you than that. You know, I drive to work here today and I'm looking around. I'm, I'm, I'm very conscious now of my surroundings, right? I play cornerback, so I got peripheral vision, I say. But I'm very conscious. I look around and I'm seeing all these people in their cars, right? And I tell myself, most of these people are going to a job they don't even like, right? Doing things they don't even like to make money to impress people that they don't like, right? So, so, they're, so they're, they're existing, but they ain't living, right? They're existing day by day, week by week, month by month, month, month by month, but they ain't living because they're afraid, right? They're afraid of the stress and the pressure and the pain of growth, not knowing that that's what's necessary to grow, that's what's necessary to be great. That's what's necessary to fulfill what God has for you. He got more for you than that. Right? I, I, didn't, I knew it in my heart of hearts, but I didn't know it. Right? Because, I'm, it, because it's hiding behind all the fear and anxiety. Right? I have a saying in here that the body you want, the body you want is right behind the gate, right in front of you. Right, the, those, those 30 pounds you want to lose, that six pack abs you want, those arms you want are right behind a gate, right in front of you. Unfortunately, that gate is guarded by some guard dogs, right? Named fear, named anxiety, pit bulls, right? Named disappointment, named failure. Some bad dogs, man. Some bad dogs in front of you, right? But like a lot of dogs, shut up! They, they cower, right? But you got to be willing to get that, over to that dog and scare it back. Uh, scare it back, right? That wall is there, it's guarded. Right behind it is what you want. Right behind it is the job you want. Right behind it is the business you want to start. Right behind it is 30 pounds you want to lose. Right behind it is a relationship with your daughter or your, or your wife or your husband. Right behind it, but you're afraid of the damn dogs in front of you. The pain in front of you, right? So, so I've, I've learned to embrace it. Right, I embrace it when I'm here in my gym, right, doing a drop set or doing a thousand rep set or doing, like I did yesterday, 300 pound deadlifts, 25 to 5 deadlifts with burpees. What's up, BC? What's up, Tony? So I embrace it since the late 80s. Ask my boy BC, Brandon, we've been doing that shit since we were 15, embracing pain. I surround myself with people who embrace pain. If we know it's headed somewhere, if I, know, if, if I know one more sprint 
is going to make me a starter on varsity. I'll do one more sprint. I don't care how painful it is. If I know 25 more burpees, it's going to make me comfortable on the beach. And my wife look at me like, ooh, I'm going to do 25 burpees. If I know carrying a book around, getting ready for my, for my GMAT to give me an MBA, to be a CFO, makes me look goofy, but I know it, it, it's one more step to my dream, I'm a, I'll do it. I'll do it. Right? So I embrace discomfort. Right? I embrace pain. Right? Because I know that's what's necessary. In the moment it hurts, right? This last year has been crazy for me. Trying to work through some barriers. My boy Tanache, my, my branding man, manager, came to my office, came, came to my gym one day and was like, I want to help you build your brand, right? I need you to do videos. I need you to do this. I need you. To, I wasn't ready for all that, guys. I thought I was. I said I was. But I was too afraid to do it. I was too afraid to do it. So he said, you know what? Be here at Tuesday. I'm going to do videos. We're doing video, five videos. Then it was 10 videos. Then be there at 10 p.m. We shot videos from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. I don't know how many nights. Right? I was afraid. I was scared. Right? But God had a plan for me to do more with what I had inside of me than just teach people how to, how to lift weights. Right? So, so whenever I screwed up and talked fast or stuttered, right? To me, that was confirmation that I wasn't doing the right thing for me. No, 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 no. That was confirmation that I was doing the right thing for me because it was hurting. It was painful, right? And God was saying, you know what? If you can't deal with this pain, talking to people on Facebook Live, how am I going to give you a big old auditorium to speak your truth? You can't do this, right? So I was getting ready, right? This, this football season with my son was a crazy one. Right? Some of you know it, right? So I was an assistant coach. Through circumstance, I became the head coach. Right? I never wanted to be the head coach. I know, I know, I know, I know my, my demeanor, right? my methodology ain't for everybody. Right? Drives my wife crazy how I act sometimes in my gym. You know? so, so I didn't want to be head coach, but whatever the reason, God said, you know what? I'm going to make you head coach this year. Right? And scrutiny. Right. Parents didn't like me, my methodology. And so I was getting arrows thrown at me every day at practice, every day at the games, every day on social media. Right. And it hurt. Right. I know I seem tough. Right. But I'm sensitive. <laughs> People who know me know I'm sensitive. Right. That's, that's why I come across that way sometimes. Right. But but God was preparing, uh, preparing me for greater things. Right? Because when I do grow and I do become big and I do become this, this motivational speaker that I use my fitness as the, as the conduit, as the platform to get it started, right? God knows I'm going to be ready for it. Because if, if, if 100 followers means 10 people who don't like me, what's a million going to be? What's a million going to be? Right? So he was saying, you know what? I need to get you ready for scrutiny. I got to get you ready for pain. Right, so, so coaching a team that listens to me and, and loves me, right, is the first 14 sets or 14 reps, right? Having a team that ain't perfect with parents that don't necessarily like me, that's the 15th rep. That's the one that hurts. That's the one that counts, right? So all the other stuff didn't even count, right? The videos that are easy to do that I know about, that I can talk to fluidly and eloquently, those don't count. The ones that are hard, those count, right? So in life, it's the same way. So doing the things, you know, studying stuff you know, right? You, you've already passed algebra. You've already passed geometry. Now you add calculus, right? Restudying uh, geometry and restudying algebra ain't going to help you at this point. Right, those don't those reps don't count. Right? The beginning reps of calculus, those count. Right? Right? The the the, the first dates with your with your husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend that are easy and fun, those don't count. They don't they don't count. The ones that, that count are when it becomes your first argument, your first disagreement, the first thing that he or she does that ooh, 
That's kind of weird. Those are, are the ones that count. Right? Those are the ones that build the relationship. Not the other shit. Not the easy shit. That's easy. Movies, dinner, roses, cards, when you're all fluffy and lovey-dovey. Those don't fucking count. The ones after the 12th date, the 20th date, right? When, when you wake up and, and, and the breath is stinking, Right? Or they ain't got their makeup on. Right? Or he or she or whatever does something that's kind of quirky. That you didn't see in the first 11 dates. Now it's real. Now you're growing. Right? Fitness the same way. Fitness. Right? Jogging, jogging a mile, that's easy, don't count. That, that second mile counts. That's why I say I could do a marathon today. I've had, I've had dozens and dozens of arguments with people in my class who do marathons. Right? I'm not against marathon running or, or distance running. It ain't the most effective way to lose weight. Right? But that's a different argument. But I've got an argument saying I could run a marathon today. Right now. How do I know? Because after mile 13, unless you're, unless you're a Kenyan or Nigerian, it hurts for everybody. After mile 13. And so if at mile 13 it comes down to, to mental toughness, Right? And it's the same pain for me as it is for you, right? Then I'm good. I embrace that. If I know that the first 13 miles don't count for anybody, unless you're Nigerian or, 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 or Kenyan, that the first 13 miles don't count for anybody, and that at mile 14 is when it really gets tough and really gets involved, and it's the same for me as it is for you, then I'm good. Then I'm good. My whole life I've been doing that. My whole life I've been doing that. My whole life, I've been doing that. And so, and so only now am I saying, you know what? I'm going to take it to the next level. I'm going to the next level, right? I'm going to get really, 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 really scared of stuff, right? I'm going to get really, really, really afraid of that weight that God's putting on my shoulders because I'm ready for it, right? I've been deadlifting 200 pounds metaphorically in my life. I'm ready for 300 for 25 reps. Is it scary? Yeah, but I'm ready for it. I was scared at 200. I was scared at 100. Right? I was in my class here. Again, I'm telling you, the reason I'm here, the reason I'm doing this is because God has given me the ability to use all that shit I've been doing since, since the 80s of training. Right? And all that fear that I've come through. Right? All the fear. All the stuttering. All the, all the getting teased. Some of y'all still on here who tease me. That's all good. I love you. Right? He can't talk. He talks fast. Right? All, all the fears that I've gone through has brought me to the point now where I can speak about it to you guys, right? To you guys, because I know how it is, right? So all that stuff has been done for a reason because now I understand how it's all the same stuff. It's all the same stuff, right? It's all the same, it's all the same mantra, right? And it all comes down to this, very simple, right? The reps don't count until you want to quit, right? The reps don't count until you want to quit. Right, the first, the first reps up to that point don't even matter in life. Right, and, and for everybody it's different. Right, for me, push-ups tw is, is 24 reps. Right, for, for somebody, so somebody who, who's, who's, who's in graduate school for math, right, it's a lot of math before you have to get to the math that really counts. For a kindergartner, that's a, that's a, short, little, that's a short rope. Right, it counts pretty quickly. Because it's all new, right? But, but, but you embrace that. You embrace that because you know God's giving you longer and longer rope, right? A longer and longer leash, right? But you still have to get to the very end of that leash as often as possible to grow. So stretch yourself, push yourself, right? Train yourself to be great, right? Walk into the gym of life and ask God, what you got for me today? I'm ready for it. Right? Walk into the gym of life and ask God to give you stuff that makes you stronger. To give you stuff that makes you better. To give you stuff that makes you smarter. To give you stuff that makes you a better husband, a better wife, a better brother, a better son. Give it to me. I want to be great. And I don't mean just say it like my boot campers do. Give it to me. I want to be great. Is it going to hurt? Yes, I know it. 
right? Is it going to be painful? Yes, I know it. Stressful? I know it. But I'm ready. Give it to me. Give it to me. I want it. I want it. Right? Because I know when you give it to me and I go home, I'm going to come back tomorrow stronger and better and better prepared for the next thing in life, for the next workout metaphorically in life. But you got to want it. Right? We all want the muscles. You got to want the pain to the muscle. We all want to be smart and get an MBA or a graduate degree, but you got to want the late night studying when you want to fall asleep. And your friends are out partying. You gotta want that part of it. You gotta ask for that part of it. Right? So, I'm getting better at that, guys. Am I better inherently at working out? No. I'm better at asking for the pain. I'm better at understanding the pain. I'm better at connecting the pain to the process, to the prize. The pain to the process, to the prize. The pain to the process, to the prize. As Brandon, I'm telling you, since 87, 88, I've been connecting the pain to the process, to the prize. Even when I knew the prize was 20 years away. Even when I knew that. Even when I knew this workout wasn't going to get me there today. But I knew it was part of the pain and the process to get to the prize. So wake up and ask for that pain. Ask for it. Embrace it. Don't run from it. I'm tired of running from it. Oh, they might laugh at me on Facebook or Instagram. I used to do, I, I could, I'm getting better. I sat in my car for, for two minutes, came here, walked around for five. Before, that would have been an hour process. Avoiding this. Now I'm better at it. Am I better at speaking? A little bit. A little bit. Maybe. But I'm better at not caring about that part of it. About embracing that part of it. I ain't perfect, right? But I'm, but, but I'm embracing it. I'm accepting it. Right? You're not going to finish every set. Right? Of every workout. But what you get better at is accepting the challenge every day. Right? I would say, can we do that? People say, I'll try. No, you say, I'm going to do it. If you don't do it, we'll know you tried. Right? If you go into it and say, I'll try, that's the wrong mindset. I'm going I'm to do it. I'm going to do it. And if you don't do it, we'll know you tried. God will know you tried. You know you tried. Don't say it beforehand. Right? I'm going to be a multi-million dollar motivational speaker. I said it. I said it. Right? And, and, and Tanache... My branding manager is the first person to tell me to say it. Right? I stuttered growing up. I spoke fast. I still speak fast. My whole life. So in my head, I never saw myself as a motivational speaker. Right? I'm a, I'm a guy who lifts weights, a guy who did finance. And so I use that platform. Right? But, but saying you're a motivational speaker, that's a big step. I'm saying it. I'm a motivational speaker. That's what I'm doing. Right? I'm going I'm to I'm continue to train people and coach people, right? but I'm going to use that platform to teach the real shit, the real lessons right? behind football, behind training, behind weight loss, behind going for your goals to be, to, to be a lawyer or, or doctor or build a business. Right? That's why I'm here, to do that. Right? took me 46 and, and change years to figure it out, but that's why I'm here. Yeah, and all the other stuff I did along the way was preparation for this, right? Was building for this, right? Was workouts for this, right? All that stuff, all, all, all the stuff I went through, all the challenges, all the fear, all the sidesteps, all the missteps, all the failures was preparation for this. And so what are you preparing for in your life? Right? Today, this week, this month, this year. I hope you ain't one of those guys I saw today driving in that's just going to a job they don't like, making money to impress people they don't like. Because you're better than that. Right? You're better than that. You have more inside you than that. But you got to be willing to accept the fact that in order to get better, you got to get to that rep in life. 
right? Get to that rep in the workout that makes you want to stop and then push through it. But more importantly, get to that rep, that repetition of this grind, of this process. Get to that rep in life that's going to make you better, right? Do that one thing today that scares you to make you better, right? Stop doing things that are comfortable, right? Whatever it is, stop doing things that make you comfortable and step outside yourself and realize that inside you is a greatness that you can't even imagine. I, I promise you, ain't nothing special about me, nothing. Nothing special about me. I was never the best player on my team. I was never the smartest person in my class. But guess what? I played college football and got an NBA. I ain't special. I ain't, I ain't overly handsome. I ain't overly fit naturally. I ain't overly smart. I ain't overly athletic. I played football in college. I got an NBA. Yeah. Made to the same woman for, for, for 17 years. Got two kids who still love me. My son today took him to school. He's in seventh grade. Blew me a kiss. That guy you see on Facebook who's grinding, who's a dog in basketball, who's a dog in football, blew me a kiss in seventh grade. I ain't special. I just understand that every day a little bit of pain is good for you. Right? Almost to my detriment. I almost, almost like it too much. Right, where I, where I always want to go through the process and never get the prize. Well, now I'm ready for the prize. I'm ready, God, for the prize. <laughs> right, I'm ready for the prize, right? But, but I embrace the process. I embrace the pain. I do. Right? And, and Jesus did. And you, and you do. And you can. And you should embrace it. Don't run from it. Don't run from it. Right? Because, because those first few reps you're doing right now don't matter. Right? Get to the point where it hurts. Get to the point where you struggle. Right? And when you get there, instead of running, instead of crying, instead of pouting, complaining, just to remind yourself that this is the beginning of the reps that count. All right? All right, guys. Love you. Uh, hope it wasn't too long. Uh, I'm off today. No workout. So I'm going to uh, go to my corporate account early and get on my book. And I'm, I'm going to get on a book, my book I'm writing. And I have a new uh, um, tutorial or, or uh, course. Man, I, can't think today. I have a new course coming out. Uh, so be ready for that. It's coming soon. And I have a book coming out. So all these, these Bobbyisms and anecdotes and lessons and stories are going to be in both the book and the course, right? I'm going to teach you guys how to be better every single day of your life. All right, guys? So as always, have a good Thursday. Um, as always, we're trying to be better every single day, all right? Better? <laughs> um, shut your ass up, BC. That's gray, dog. I always tell these little kids, man, that try to hang with me. I didn't paint that. That's real gray. That's real gray, dog. All right, guys. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.